This video is a virtual anatomy lecture series directed by Dr. Strategy using an anatomic table. The manipulation and the annotation was done by Dr. Mai Ba Chuong. The English script was monitored and recorded by Ms. Soyeon Kim, the PhD candidate. You can learn human anatomy easily with SNUSD Knowledge Share Initiative. The vertebral column is a curved structure composed of bony vertebrae that are interconnected by cartilaginous intervertebral discs. It is divided into five different regions, with each region characterized by a different vertebral structure, interlaced by strong joints and ligaments. No two vertebrae are identical. They vary in size and characteristics, especially from one region to another. However, they all have the following basic structures. For example, this is the sixth thoracic vertebra. The vertebral body is the large cylindrical part located anteriorly that gives strength to the spine. Vertebral arch is located posterior to the body. It consists of two pedicles and two laminae. This is the pedicle. And this is the lamina. The pedicle is the root projected from the back side of the body, not just the upper side as you can see here, which is in yellow. The pedicles contain superior and inferior notches. Which form intervertebral foramina. The pedicles, laminae, and body of each vertebra form a cavity called vertebral foramen. There are seven vertebral processes in total, all projecting from the vertebral arch. One spinous process. Two transverse processes. And four articular processes. Articular processes are two superior articular processes and two inferior articular processes. Between two vertebrae, there is a cushion of fibrocartilage which is called intervertebral disc between the pedicles of neighboring vertebrae at all levels in the spine. There is the intervertebral foramen which serves as the doorway between the spinal canal periphery. In this aspect, we can see the inferior and superior articular processes, the pedicle, and the body. The cervical spine is the most superior portion of the vertebral column lying between the cranium and the thoracic vertebrae. It consists of seven vertebrae, and there are three atypical ones the atlas, the axis, the vertebra prominence. As you can see, vertebra prominence has the longest spinous process. It is the bony point sticking out the most at the back of our neck. Let's talk about the atlas. It consists of anterior and posterior arches, with anterior and posterior tubercles and contains two lateral masses. The masses articulate with the occipital condyles of the skull on superior articular facet supporting its weight. C 
also contains vertebral foramen, transverse processes, and transverse foramen. On the inferior view, there are inferior articular facet and inferior vertebral notch. Let's continue with the axis. It contains an upwards tooth-like projection. and two superior articular facets. These facilitate articulation with the atlas and head rotation. We can also see the body, the pedicles, the laminas, and the vertebral foramen. And from the back side, there are transverse processes, inferior articular processes, spinous process, transverse foramen, and inferior vertebral notch. This is how C1 articulates with C2. And this is the transverse ligament of atlas. The 12th thoracic vertebrae form the second region of the vertebral column. They play a role in forming the thoracic cage. The first four and last four thoracic vertebrae share some characteristics with the cervical and lumbar spine, respectively. The middle four are typical thoracic vertebrae. They contain several distinctive features. For example, this is the eighth thoracic vertebra. It contains coastal facets that articulate with the ribs. The spinous and transverse processes which point inferiorly are long and strong. The vertebral body is heart-shaped. The vertebral foramen is smaller. This is how the thoracic vertebrae articulate with the ribs. The five lumbar vertebrae form the lumbar spine. This is the third lumbar vertebra. Lumbar vertebrae have the largest vertebral bodies in the entire vertebral column. A 
a feature that facilitates weight bearing. The pedicles and laminae are thick and strong. The spinous process is short and sturdy for the attachment of strong lumbar muscle. The articular processes here are oriented differently compared to other types of vertebrae. This is the fifth lumbar vertebra, which is the largest and most inferior of the lumbar vertebrae, and this is how it connects with the sacrum. The sacrum consists of five sacral vertebrae fused together. It is located between the lumbar spine and the coccyx and forms part of the pelvis. Its main role is to transmit the entire weight of the upper body to the pelvis in order to reach the lower limbs. Sacrum has a base. And an apex. Within its center is the sacral canal, which is the continuation of the spinal canal. Anterior sacral foramina here, and posterior sacral foramina allow for the exit of the spinal nerves. This is the median sacral crest. Sacral cornea is here. This is the sagittal hiatus. Superior articular process is here. And the superior articular facet is in green. This is the sacral promontory. Transverse ridge is here. The coccyx consists of three to four fused coccygeal vertebrae. It has short transverse processes. And coccygeal cornua. The coccyx is a point of attachment for the gluteus maximus and coccygeal muscles. The coccyx articulates with the sacrum like this. Oh, 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 oh,